This video is sponsored by Stream. Build high quality, flexible chat experiences in your iOS app with the Stream SDK. Get started for free with the link in the description down below. In today's video, we're going to be learning about a common topic that a lot of folks confuse, and that is content hugging priorities in auto layout. So instead of trying to explain what the heck that actually is, we're just going to dive right into it. Drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new. Let's open up Xcode and create a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. We want to make sure our project is set to Swift, and we're going to use Storyboard since this topic pertains to UI kit and auto layout. I'm going to go ahead and call our project here content hugging. We'll go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, as soon as Xcode decides to load, I'm going to close this right panel. We're going to expand our window, also choose a simulator from our list up here. Maybe we'll go with the 12 Pro Max. I'll go ahead and give this a run. And we're going to jump into our view controller. Now I'm going to explain the basics of this and then we're just going to do an example since it's a lot easier to understand once you end up seeing it. The basic concept of content hugging, which is confused oftentimes, is which constraint gets priority over another constraint. So what I mean by that is imagine on the simulator on the right hand side here you have a label which takes up the top part of the screen and then, then there's another one right below it which is from the bottom of the one above it all the way to the bottom. How does auto layout figure out which label should be prioritized and get stretched to fill up the remainder of the screen? The first thing you'll understand is there's something called intrinsic size, and that's basically going to have the label be at least as tall as it needs to be to fill up its text. But then there's going to be a bunch of remainder space. So let's go ahead and do an example since I think it's a lot easier to see and visualize instead of talk about. And I'll, you can, of course, do this through storyboard as well, but we're going to do it programmatically since it's kind of more common and it helps with understanding much more. So we're going to create two labels here programmatically. I'm going to create them in this anonymous closure pattern UI label we're gonna do return label I'm gonna do some quick properties on here the first one is going to simply be uh, hello and we're just gonna copy and paste hello a couple times we'll be able to do a couple times like that I'm also gonna go ahead and say number of lines is going to be zero therefore we're gonna get line wrap we'll also go ahead and increment the font size here we're gonna use a system font size of perhaps 50 nice and large and lastly, we're gonna just center the text alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this so we have a second label. We'll make this label too. And this one is simply going to be world, therefore we're gonna get hello world. All right, let me also set a background color to these so we can visualize more accurately where the frame of a particular uh, label starts and where the other one ends. So we'll make that one system green, I'll make this one system pink, and let's start adding our labels. So first things first, just like any subview, you wanna add it as a, a member of the hierarchy. So we're gonna say label one, and then we're gonna say label two. Now, before I actually do label two, let me go ahead and just add some constraints. Um, I'm assuming that folks watching have a basic concept and grasp of constraints. So we're going to say we want to activate constraints. So we're going to pass in an array of constraints. That's not constraint. Let me spell that correctly. NS uh, constraints. And we're going to once again say activate. I keep spelling this incorrectly. Let's try that. Third time's a charm. NS layout constraints. That's what I'm looking for. Now we're going to say activate. Now, one thing that I forgot to do, which you don't want to forget to do, is you're going to say translate into auto resizing mask is going to be false for both of our labels. That way it will uh, respect the constraint. And let's constrain our first label. So we're going to give it four constraints. We're going to say label one's uh, top anchor is going to be a constraint and it's going to be equal to something and this is going to be view that safe area layout guide dot top anchor just like that let me close up this left panel since we don't really need it and i can just copy and paste this a total of three more times to get our uh, label situated so this bottom one is going to be bottom anchor then there's going to be view dots we're going to say leading and trailing to get the left and the right just don't forget to update them here as well. So leading, 
trailing, and bottom. We're gonna go ahead and hit Command R and we should see, I believe, our green label taking over the entire screen. We see that it's respecting the safe areas and this is what we expect to see. Now let me do something a little different now. Let's go ahead and add the second one. So we're gonna add the second label and I'm just gonna copy and paste all these constraints and we're gonna tweak one thing in particular. The thing that we're gonna tweak after I copy and paste this guy here is we want to first of all change all of these to be label two and we fix that alignment with a control i so label two label two label two and label two now we want label two to be from the bottom to the bottom of the screen which makes sense and we're going to get rid of the top anchor for label two and we're going to say label one's bottom is essentially going to be the top of label two so we're gonna say the bottom of the green label should touch, should be basically pinned to the top of label two. And if you go ahead and give this a run, here in lies uh, the problem. You're gonna see that everything will lay out appropriately, but one really interesting thing to note. How come the pink label was chosen as the label to get stretched out? What if we wanted the top green label to get stretched out? Well, the first thing you might be thinking is, well, it's kind of strange, right? Because the bottom label has a much smaller text, which drives its intrinsic size. In other words, you don't need the bottom one to be as tall to account for its vertical text space. However, the one up above, while it doesn't truncate the text, it definitely uh, collapses the height only to fit the allotted text that we have assigned. And this is where content hugging priority comes into play. We can tell Auto Layout, the layout engine that's making these decisions, which thing has a higher priority. And through that, we can actually control which one will get collapsed and which one will get expanded. So if you're ever building out a user interface and your designer gives you a spec and they say that this top one should take up more of the screen, you want to use content hugging priority. Now, just so we can visualize this a little better, I'm going to change the background color of this to be like purple so it's a little brighter. And right after we've assigned these constraints, we're gonna use content hugging priority. So we're gonna assign on label one, we're gonna say label one sets content hugging priority. And we're gonna say the priority of this is default high in the vertical access position. So if you go ahead and give that a run, now what you'll see is things haven't changed. Okay, what gives? Let's go ahead and make this uh, low for label one. Let me double check what label one is. Label one is with all this hello stuff. Let's try that one more time. And we should see that label one now expands. And the reason it's not expanding is something must be screwed up here. So we got to figure out what that is. Let me go ahead and tweak this to label two. We're going to make label two low. And I believe we also need to make the other one higher. So we're going to say label two is low. We'll copy and paste this. And I'm going to make this one here. We're going to make this Hi, go ahead and give that a run. And if it still doesn't cooperate and expand the top one, something is uh, going on a little strange here. So we need to figure it out. So let's take a look at our constraints. We're gonna do some debugging live and in action. So here we're saying the top is fine. The left and right, the trailing and leading are kind of irrelevant. So instead of doing label two or label one's bottom, we're gonna say label two's top anchor is going to be equal to label one's bottom anchor. If you go ahead and give that a run, let's see if that makes a difference. All right, still no difference. So something is really funky that's going on here. So we're setting a hugging priority. We've got default high. Let me go ahead and switch these. These are always extremely easy to screw up and confuse. You can see clearly I do it myself. Ah, there we go, okay. So here, what we have done, let's read through the labels to make sure they're correct. So the label one object is all the hellos. Label two is world. What we're saying is label one's constraints, so all the hellos, uh, the top left and right are accounted for, and the bottom that is basically gonna calculate the implicit heights is going to be determined by label two's top anchor. So label two, this bottom pink red looking one, its top is going to be the bottom of the one above it, this purple one. Now the reason that the purple one got expanded versus the other one is we're saying that the label two content hugging priority, the compression in other words, not to be confused with compression priority, is higher than the 
uh, label one's content hugging priority. And what you'll notice is if I comment these out and give this a run, we should see the inverse effect. So now we can see that the hugging priority to collapse the vertical height, and the way I think about this is uh, kind of strange, but when you think about someone giving you a hug, like hugging, you can see that this purple one is kind of collapsed and pinched together vertically. It's being hugged, hence the term hugging. So the hugging priority in the auto layout calculation without us overriding it gives the purple one a higher priority versus this bottom red pink one. And what we're doing here in our call is we're explicitly changing it. We're saying, no, 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 make the hugging priority of label two, AKA this pink red one, higher than the purple one. And what that'll do is that's gonna collapse this, it's gonna hug the pink area such that it only accounts for room in which it needs to render its world text and it'll make this one taller. So that is content hugging priority in a nutshell. It's a bit of a strange concept given the name confuses people, but for those of you who have used this in Storyboard, you'll be very familiar with this. This is extremely important once you start dealing with a lot of nested subviews. You can imagine if I have a label three, then it becomes even trickier, okay? Which one is higher than the other? Do we collapse one or two? And auto layout makes these uh, executive style decisions under the hood, and sometimes we wanna override it. So this is how you would override it. Now the one last thing I'm gonna mention before wrapping it up here, this is not to be confused with proportional layouts. So you can add constraints, let's say you want both of these labels to be 50% of their container, you don't wanna use content hugging priority to try to get these two purple and pink labels to be 50% of the uh, vertical height. For that, you're gonna use constraint with a multiplier of 0.5, which is gonna get you a 50% height. Content hugging priority is simply to tell auto layout how to prioritize which thing gets collapsed and which thing gets expanded. This applies both vertically and horizontally. If I had these labels next to each other, we would just change the axis here to horizontal. And that's basically all I've got for you guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Have you used content hugging priority before? There's something called content compression priority as well. Super confusing names in my opinion. I'll also screw them up very often as you just saw in this video. Leave any questions you got down below. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and want to stick around. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.